The sound of structural failure. 0, 0 to 130. I want you to do something weird for a second. Close your eyes. Imagine you're standing at the 35th kilometer mark of a big city marathon. You aren't looking at the runners, you are just listening. Here comes the sub three hour group. Wish, wish, wish. It's almost silent, light, bouncing. They pass you like ghosts. Now, wait two hours. Here comes the five hour group. Slap, slap, slap. It's heavy. It's loud. It sounds like wet bags of sand being dropped on concrete. That sound, that isn't just noise. That is the sound of structural failure. That is the acoustic evidence of bones colliding with asphalt without any muscular protection. There is a dangerous, comforting lie spread in beginner running groups that says, go slow, take your time. It's safer than pushing hard. This is mathematically, physically, and medically false. Running a marathon in five hours instead of four doesn't protect your body. It subjects you to a massacre. It turns a difficult athletic event into an orthopedic trauma event. In this video, I am going to prove to you, using cold, hard math, that the safe shuffle is actually destroying your joints. I will show you how running slower forces you to absorb 1,000 tons of extra force. That is like carrying a blue whale on your back for the last 10 kilometers. Part 1. The Blue Whale Calculation. Visualizing the Pain. Let's stop guessing and look at the terrifying physics of an 80-kilogram male runner. Science tells us that every single step you take while running sends a shockwave of roughly 2.5 to 3 times your body weight up through your tibia, into your knee, and up to your hip. Let's be conservative. 80 kilograms times 2.5 equals 200 kilograms of force per step. Now let's define two runners. Runner A, the athlete, runs with purpose and finishes in four hours. Based on an average cadence, he takes roughly 40,000 steps. Runner B, the shuffler, runs to just finish in five hours. Because he is shuffling with a slow, lazy cadence, he takes about 45,000 steps. Do the math, it's brutal. Runner B is on the battlefield for an extra hour. He takes 5,000 extra impacts. 5,000 steps times 200 kilograms per step equals 1 million kilograms of extra force. Let that sink in. By being slow, your legs have to absorb 1 million extra kilos. That is equivalent to carrying a blue whale or 15 army tanks across the finish line. You think you are being gentle to your knees by going slow? No. You are volunteering to be crushed by a blue whale. Your cartilage doesn't care about your good intentions. It only cares about the physics. And the physics say you are being pulverized by cumulative load. Part two, the spine compression, why your back hurts. But wait, it gets worse. It's not just your knees. We need to talk about your back. Why do so many five-hour marathoners finish the race walking hunched over like they are 90 years old? It's called axial loading. Gravity is constant. Every second you are standing upright, gravity is pushing down on your spine, compressing the intervertebral discs. Running amplifies this. When you run a five-hour marathon, you are subjecting your spine to high-impact compression for 60 extra minutes compared to the four-hour runner. Think about your core muscles. By hour four, they are exhausted. They stop stabilizing your spine. So who takes the load? Your skeletal structure. Your vertebrae begin to grind. The faster runner isn't just saving time. They are saving their discs. They get off the battlefield before their structural integrity collapses entirely. Part three, the slap, reach the Boeing, the GCT trap. So why is the five-hour runner so loud? Why the slap? It's because of a metric called ground contact time, GCT. Look at Elihid Kipchoge. When his foot hits the ground, it's gone in under 200 milliseconds. He treats the floor like lava, he touches it, and Boeing! His stiff tendons snap him back up. He is a pogo stick. His muscles do very little work. The energy is free elastic recoil. 
Now look at the 5 hour shuffler. Their GCT is often over 350 milliseconds. They aren't bouncing, they are landing. They treat the floor like quicksand. They sink into it. Slap. They linger in the danger zone. Every millisecond you spend on the ground is a millisecond where gravity is winning. When you kill the elastic energy, your muscles and bones have to absorb 100% of the shock. This is why the 4-hour runner is tired, but the 5-hour runner is injured. The 4-hour runner rode a bicycle. The 5-hour runner ran on flat tires. Part 4. Attacking Toxic Positivity We need to have a serious conversation about the culture of modern running. We need to stop telling beginners. It doesn't matter how fast you go as long as you finish. You are a hero just for showing up. This is toxic positivity, and it is medically irresponsible advice. Physics doesn't care if you are a hero. If you show up unprepared for the demands of 42 kilometers, the road will break you. If you run a 5.30 marathon, you have likely caused bone stress injuries that will take six months to heal. Is that heroic, or is it poor preparation? Speed acts as armor. The faster you run, up to a point, the better your mechanics usually are. You stand taller, protecting the spine. Your cadence is higher, less load per step. You spend less time on the ground. If you are in a burning building, do you walk slowly to be safe? No, you run to get out of there. The marathon is a physiological burning building. Your goal should be to get out of there under four hours before the roof collapses on your head. Part five. How to become a pogo stick. Okay, Demetrius, I'm scared. I don't want the blue whale on my back. How do I stop shuffling? You cannot just decide to run faster in the race. You have to build the machinery and training. Most slow runners only train slow running. They practice the slap every single day. To become a pogo stick, you need two things that most plants neglect. Heavy strength training, you need squats and deadlifts. Why? Because strong muscles act as the brakes that absorb the 200 kilogram force, so your joints don't have to. Plyometrics, jump training. You need to teach your tendons to be stiff springs. You cannot be a pogo stick if your spring is made of cooked spaghetti. Stop training for time on feet. Start training for force absorption. The invitation. I know this video sounds harsh. Good. It's meant to wake you up. My goal is not to shame the slow runner. My goal is to save the slow runner from orthopedic surgery. You are capable of breaking four hours. You don't need better genetics. You need better mechanics. You need a plan that treats you like an athlete building a machine, not a jogger logging miles. If you want weekly schedules that include the exact plyometrics and cadence drills to fix your mechanics, join the membership of this channel. But if you want the complete engineering blueprint, if you want to take your 80 kilogram body and turn it into a sub four hour injury resistant machine, my new book, Sub Four Hours Master Plan, the hybrid coaching system is finally available. It doesn't just give you miles, it gives you the biomechanical protocols to handle those miles safely. Link is in the pinned comment. And finally, if your knees hurt right now, if you run and hear that slap, 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 and you don't know how to fix it, I invite you to get a training audit. Send me a message with the word audit. I will analyze your cadence and ground contact time. I will teach you how to be a ninja, not a tank. Silence is speed. Speed is safety. Check the book link below or send me a message. Your running journey powered by science.